she's on him. So. Hello friends and welcome to another one of my customization videos. Uh, today we're going to do something fun. I managed to pick up one of these Batman the Animated Series DC Collectibles Batmobiles for a good price and it was still in the box. This is something I missed out on when it came out initially because I wasn't collecting vehicles and you know uh, it didn't really fit into what I had going on at the time. But now that I've really made this shift in my collection toward vehicles and the characters that go with them, uh, and I've got several Batmobiles at this point, many of which you've seen on the channel. And this was the one that was out there that was already complete that I didn't have to build that uh, I was missing. So, um, you know, I love this iteration of the Batmobile. It's, it's probably my second favorite behind the tumbler. And because I was able to get one, I was like, well, I need a Batman to go with it. Now, I already had this DC Collectibles animated series Batman. And it's a great figure in a lot of ways, but it also kind of sucks in a lot of ways. Um, you know, anytime you have a, a figure that's not hyper articulated, like a SH figure arts or Mafex or Mezco, but it comes with a stand, that means the company knew that that thing won't stand up on its own. <laughs> so, and you know, it's just cartoonier than I like. My, my collection is centered around like realistic depictions of characters. And as such, I, I love Mezco and other soft goods 112 scale figures because they have the most amount of realism to them. So we're gonna make a Batman to go with this. It's going to be a Mezco style Batman. I don't want it to look too cartoony. So it's gonna kind of straddle the line between the exaggerated cartoon proportions, but also a more realistic kind of Mezco style look. So I've got the supplies for it some other fodder pieces that I've had laying around or that were part of other things that I'm gonna use. And we're gonna get to it. Okay, so here are all the pieces that I'm gonna need that I picked up online to make this figure. So first of all, we have the GW Toys 112 scale blank body. This is the first one of these I've used. They're a little bit smaller than a Mezco. Uh, they're probably, I would say they're like more the size of a Mezco, like girth wise, but more of like a Mafex height. So I haven't used one of these yet, but the figure that we are attempting to replace sort of here is, is that DC Collectibles Batman. And that is on the smaller, you know, more true six inch scale. Uh, so in order to scale with that vehicle, we want something along that size. Here's a look at the body out of the box. I think anatomically, this is really great for this version of Batman because he is, you know, based on the cartoon. So it's more broad shouldered, a little bit more barrel chested. So I think this will be perfect for that. This I got from an eBay seller made for this body specifically. And I think these were like 12 or 13 bucks. And it's a really nice fabric. It's very soft. And so it's a two piece suit. It also comes with a neck cover in case you want that bit. Now I need him to have a black neck. So I'll replace the neck with a black one that I have. Then from GPS slot, which I've mentioned before uh, on this channel, I got these little briefs. They made these for people to put on their Mezco Batmans because, you know, Mezco Batman didn't have the briefs and a lot of people were like, oh, I want undies on them. So now you have it. <laughs> I got a cape from them. Now, the reason that I got just the one blue cape is because this animated style Batman has uh, like a blue lining in his cape. And I'm gonna put a black one over the outside of it. We're gonna try that out. We're gonna see how it goes. You know, maybe some trimming involved. I don't think I can cut this one because it's all sewn and wired. And so, um, you know, I may have to find an alternative. But there's gonna be a lot to figure out about this one along the way. That's part of the journey, right? Um, and a lot of folks are, you know, they ask me questions. How did you do this? What did you do for that? You're gonna see my process in this video. Uh, but I encourage you, if you're gonna do something like this or if you wanna try making your own version of this, See what works for you because what works for me might might be different from you and you know based on what I have on hand and whatnot. Okay, so a couple other things I already had on hand. I got these boots from Action Figure Customs on eBay. I'll put a link uh, in the description for his store as well. Uh, I got these boots from him a long time ago. So what I'm gonna do is cut them to a point to look more like the, the Batman style. Uh, then I had a neck from a Mezco Diabolic that I had previously used on my The Batman custom Mezco figure. And then lastly, I have this belt from Cyclops, uh, a Mezco 112 Cyclops. This actually was the Jim Lee version, so I had the strap that came up off of it. Uh, I had cut that because I used it in a, in a custom, uh, and so I had this belt left over and I've been hanging onto it thinking it'll come in handy at some point. 
and I think I'm just gonna use it for this. I think what I'll do is take a piece of styrene, cut it to fit over this, glue it on, and then paint it yellow. And, um, you know, I thought about making one in the style of this version of Batman. I kind of figure like, you know, this will do exactly the same thing. And it's already cooler because it has little pouches and it'll save me a lot of work. I'm gonna have to take this body and replace these leg attachments on there. God, they even have like veins on this. This is pretty, it's pretty cool. Um, and then hopefully this will just slot right in to that. I'll be taking the gray pants, putting them on the figure. I'll cut and glue around this base, this this piece here. That's what they, that's what the Mesco figures, how they come. So I'll cut and glue around that and then put the boot on. And then hopefully that'll be, you know, nice and clean and, and good to go. Okay, pants back on with the new trim. And I actually figured out a belt situation. I just wanna see what this one looks like over it. In the end of the day, he's got this kind of belt on. It's thick, it's got these little cylinders on it and then a big buckle. And this is the look I'm going for. So I don't think that while, while this belt is cool looking, I don't think it's gonna get the job done. So I figured out a pretty simple solution actually. I'm gonna take a strip of styrene, which is a polystyrene plastic sheeting and I'm just going to heat it up and curl it around like that. It won't be this thick. I'm gonna trim this a little bit. Okay, so we have a belt now. I wrapped it around his body like this to get the general form, and I kind of marked where uh, it needed to be, and then I took it off, held it with the tongs, and just held it in the boiling water until it basically like heated up enough to, to set itself. So next what I'm gonna do is add the little pieces. So the belt buckle is gonna be one of them. That'll go right in the center. I have this styrene, I believe it's one millimeter or two millimeter half round. It's kind of hard to see, but you can, there it is. You can see it's like basically a half of a, a cylinder and it you know runs the whole length. So I'm gonna cut little pieces of this and make it those little compartments on his belt. Okay, so we got the belt done and then I got the sleeves and the leg bits all all trimmed and glued up. So next up, I want to do the chest emblem. Now I thought about a couple different ways to do this and what I landed on was my good friend styrene. So I took one of these, this uh, ellipses template. I got these at a, at a used art supply store that we have here in town several years ago uh, and they smell like feet. <laughs> but uh, I've never found another set like this, I don't think. So I've, I've you know, held on to it even though they stink. They smell kind of like like a stinky gym sock and like a empty bag of Fritos. Anyway, so uh, I found the size I wanted, which was 11 sixteenths uh, by putting this up against the body. And I thought that was an appropriate size. So I've got two sheets of styrene here. This is from a variety pack. So the thicker one is going to be the oval, and then the thinner one I'm gonna do the bat symbol out of.
Okay, now comes the part that I've both been excited about and dreading the most, and <laughs> that is sculpting the head. I thought initially that the head that came with the body was going to be a good substitute for a like slightly more realistic version of the animated look because of the square jaw and everything, but it, the head is just too small. You can see it just looks tiny. So uh, we're going to make it bigger. I'm kind of just going to going to wing it. Um, you know, I've been sculpting for years and, and I'm, you know, an artist as my day job. So hopefully I won't be shooting myself in the foot by going in and kind of winging it. I cut the ears off and I made some ears out of styrene. I glued those on and that's going to be kind of our foundation. What we're going to be using is this Aves epoxy sculpt. Now this stuff is a two part compound. You mix equal parts together and you get about an hour before it becomes unworkable. Because it's a compound epoxy, it's when you put the two pieces together that they uh, activate. Those are about equal. So what I like to do is kind of roll them into like a longer shape. So I usually do them like this and then I just twist them together. Basically work it till it's all one color and then it's ready to go. I also keep a little bit of water nearby because this stuff is really sticky and when you're trying to sculpt it and mold it with tools and your finger, it wants to stick to them. So if you use a little bit of water, it will keep the tool from sticking to it and it'll keep your finger from sticking to it. So this stuff is great. You never have to bake it or cure it any other way. You just let it sit. And especially if you let it sit overnight, it'll really harden. And it's like it's like stone once it's hardened. I mean, here's an example of some, I, now this is a Michael Knight head that I'm making to go with my custom kit from Knight Rider that I've been working on. So that's what the Aves looks like when it's dry. And I don't know if you can hear that, but it's super hard. If I were to want to take this off, I'd really have to chip at it and, and I would not be able to get all of it very easily. So it's really durable stuff. Okay, I think that's it for the head. I may have to do a little sanding, you know, just to get some of the little bumps out. Yeah, all in all, this uh, I'm really happy with how this turned out. This is pretty much exactly what I was going for and that almost never happens to me so uh, pretty stoked about that so I'll paint this up I'm gonna give it like a fairly realistic paint job you know kind of like the speckles that you would see on skin uh, and that is gonna just I think really help kind of sell this sort of illusion that I'm going for so yeah next I gotta finish up the cape that's still been in various stages of bonding and then I need to paint the belt and the the bat symbol still and then obviously paint this head yeah so I'm gonna let this cure overnight and uh, tomorrow I'll come back to it and sand out some of the imperfections and then try to get this thing wrapped up okay so jumping ahead a bit here I've got the head all sculpted and and I've almost finished painting it uh, if you want to see how I do skin painting and skin textures, check out my video that is a painting of a, a Heath Ledger Joker head. I go over the techniques and the supplies in there. Um, but here you can see that I've put some textures in there to give it slightly more of a realistic look to it. Um, I'm, I'm going to try to clean up the cowl edges a little bit more on this side. It's, uh, it's really just like fine-tuned work in there it's very hard to do so um, but I'm trying to get it as pristine as possible so next I'm going to do a little bit of dry brushing now uh, in the interim I have sanded the head down quite a bit to give it a smoother finish overall so next I've mixed some blue paint here this is a acrylic paint it doesn't matter what brand or color this is, this is two different colors so it's going to be different uh, than whatever anybody else does because it's you know you can see how how haphazard the, the mixing process is. You just kind of do it until you get the look you want. So now I'm going to do some dry brushing. I'm going to bring out some blue highlights to kind of mimic the animated look here. Just ever so slightly going to dust that on. There we go. That's doing what we want it to. All right, here he is all wrapped up, and I'm, I'm pretty happy with him overall. Uh, a couple of things I'd like to change moving forward, and we'll get into that, but first I want to just give you an overview of the completed figure. So I ran into a couple of 
issues off camera. Number one, attaching the boots was a real pain. The pegs just didn't want to fit into the sockets on these boots. Um, you know, these are made for Mezco. This is not a Mezco body, so it ran into some issues there. So what I ended up doing was drilling into the peg and screwing a tiny screw in there. And the head of the screw was just bigger than the peg hole inside the boot. So I worked it in there after heating the boot up and it fit perfectly. Now on this boot, when I was trying to shove the peg down into it, the ball peg in here just like turned to dust. Like it just like, it just powdered. Um, you know, this resin that these are cast in is not super strong. It's not a hard plastic like it, like pegs need to be. And so it just couldn't hold up to the stress. Luckily, you know, in my fodder bin, I have a bunch of different pegs and ball pegs and stuff like that. So I was able to replace it with something that worked uh, pretty well. One thing I forgot to mention is that the hands on this, I didn't want to use the BVS Batman hands because I didn't want them to be all, you know, like padded and knuckled and stuff. So these are hands from a Mezco Diabolic that I've had that I've been using as fodder for a long time now. The cape all in all worked out fairly well. I, I tend to be a more dynamic cape poser. So I figure you won't really see a lot of the imperfections on this one. I do think I would like to replace the cape at some point. I do like the dark blue uh, in contrast to the black as opposed to like a brighter blue like this guy has. And I've seen, you know, some, some people on eBay have like custom capes that they've made for Batman figures that are based on the animated series. So they're real light blue. Uh, but they're the ones I've seen aren't wired and they're not made. They don't look like the greatest quality. So I held off on that and I, I'm just going to kind of keep my eyes open for an alternative. But this really gets the job done for now. Uh, the other thing I did that wasn't in the process video is I did put a magnet here in the sort of collar area of the cape and then one I glued to the body underneath the suit just to give it something to attach to here so that uh, it stays in place. The only issue with the cape aside from it not lining up perfectly in, in certain areas is that it's just a lot of cape like it's too much material and so I did have to kind of bunch it in the back. Uh, I don't think it looks terrible like I, I think that's like pretty reasonable for a Batman cape um, but you know I would just like something cleaner so Again, I'll be on the lookout for an alternative for this. If you know of any, please feel free to uh, let me know in the comments. I'm, you know, I'd be more than happy to, to look at alternatives that you might know of. One thing I do really enjoy about this cape setup is that it's got a wire that runs all the way across. And so it allows for that kind of like puffy shoulder look that this animated Batman has, which again, you know, is represented in this version here. So I, I do like that the cape does that. Uh, I don't know how well it's picking up, but you will have seen it in the process uh, version where I've got these sort of like blue highlights in here. It's it's a bit hard to pick up here on camera, but he's got the blue highlights on the gauntlets on the back of his hand there. I put some on the trunks. I'm really proud of how the belt turned out, though. You know, if, if you watched the whole video, you know that I was like kind of hemming and hawing about what I was going to do with it. Uh, I was going to use that Mezco Cyclops one. And eventually I said, you know what, let me just make this thing. And I'm really happy with the end result. I think it's a very faithful adaptation of, of the animated version. And uh, the symbol too. I like a 3D kind of raised chest emblem on Batman, on Superman. And this achieves that. And I think it just adds another dimension to the figure that is a little bit more on the side of realism in this sort of like kind of mixed version I wanted to do. Now let's take a look at the head here. As I mentioned, I'm much more into realism. So I don't typically do this kind of thing where it's like an exaggerated version and, you know, based on a cartoon. Uh, and so for this being kind of my first time trying that, I'm, I'm pretty stoked with how this guy looks. You know, it's, it's still got that cartoonish, like giant chin and the, the sort of chiseled jawline and stuff. But, um, and, you know, and I did kind of maintain that little point on there without doing like the full on sharp edge like he does, like he has in the cartoon. But yeah, you know, I, I wanted to do something that was kind of in the middle, you know, in terms of like believability and cartoonishness. And I think I kept the spirit of the animated series look while making it proportionately just a little bit more believable. 
So I think uh, this was a overall a successful experiment and I had a ton of fun doing it. You know, as these things always do, there were a few surprises along the way that I wasn't counting on. Um, but you take each one of those and you, you put what you learned into the next one and then hopefully you come out with a better product in the end. So, so looking at these two next to each other, it's a lot of fun to see the two different interpretations of the same version of Batman. Uh, all in all, this fits my collection style much, much better. And so I'm really happy to have this to go with the Batmobile. Now, speaking of, let's put him next to the Batmobile and see how it looks. Now, this bad boy is huge, so it's real hard to get the whole thing in the frame. But, yeah, I mean, I, I just think that looks so dope. Now, it's raised up a little bit because it's sitting on the turntable here. So, Batman, in actuality, next to it is going to stand about like that because of the wheel height. Um, but this gives you a, a pretty pretty good look at it. I'm really happy with how that scales. This is just such a sick version of the Batmobile, and I think that looks really cool next to it. I've considered, you know, they made like an ultimate version of this that had like metal wheels and, and like I think metal pipes here and or headers or whatever those are, and then like a metal grill. I've thought about trying to customize this to paint those metal but i don't want to screw it up so i think i may just leave it as it is but um you know again this is one of my absolute favorite versions of the batmobile and to have this guy standing next to it looking like this i'm i'm pretty stoked about it now i haven't tried putting him inside yet so let's see if he can squeeze in there you know what i'm not gonna mess with it <laughs> it's uh i just finished him and if anything falls off or comes unglued while I'm messing with it, I'm going to be pretty bummed out. So I think I think this will suffice. Uh, he will fit in there for sure. Um, but it's going to be some finagling and some sticking this in there and doing that. And I, I really don't want to risk damaging the Batmobile or the figure that I just finished. So, uh, But I think it actually looks pretty sick, him standing up in it like this. And I may actually display it like that. Especially, you know, because it lights up. So let me see if I can... There it is showing the lighting a little better. There we go. There's some dimmer lighting so you can see how this looks in there. Yeah, he looks real dope standing in there. I think that I think that might be the way that he gets displayed. So thank you all for joining me once again for this look at my custom Batman the Animated Series Batman figure. If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and click the like button hit subscribe. Um, once again, this channel is really growing quickly and I just appreciate it so much. I'm really looking forward to sharing more of these builds and customs with you. I've got a lot of fun stuff planned. We're going to make a diorama for my Mezco Ghostbusters. I'm hoping to try to build an Ecto-1 at some point. We're going to continue working on the custom kit from Knight Rider, uh, which I've just filmed a new segment on and that's going to be going up soon. At the beginning of this video, you will have seen a trailer for my new book, Retroactive. It's a graphic novel that I wrote and drew. It's kind of a cross between James Bond and Groundhog Day. It's a sci-fi time travel thriller. It's something I wrote and drew myself, and it is colored by Brad Simpson and lettered by Hassan Otman al -Hau. And that's out through Humanoids, uh, available on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, at your local comic shop. I'll have links in the description down below. So that's going to do it for this video. Until next time, keep your head on swivel.